All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Living the Dream podcast. Today on the show, we have Proverbs 9, verse 2. Let's get it. She has slaughtered her beasts. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. This is talking about the way of wisdom. That's like the subtitle for chapter 9. And in verse 1, she built her house and hewn the seven pillars. Now, she slaughtered her beasts. She has mixed her wine, and she has also set her table. And so reading this a second time through, you know, I always read it a first time through and I write down my notes or whatever, but reading it a second time through, it seems like slaughtering her beasts. Initially, the interpretation was going to be get your environment right. And the entrepreneurial application was going to be physical and environmental health, and then cutting negative influences and building positive influences. And when it said slaughtered her beasts, I kind of looked at it as like a negative influence, like the beasts that reside in our head, you know, the limiting beliefs that we have, just because that's kind of what I like to do. And so, but there were extrinsic things. And so slaughter the beasts in your environment. And then build positive influences where you set the table, you mix the wine. Wine was supposed to make the soul happy or make make you healthier or something. It was, it was a good thing. It wasn't a bad thing, right? Um, and I still think that kind of applies, but more so, I think she's slaughtering the beasts here as like a sacrifice almost. I'm not sure though. I didn't read a commentary or anything. This is just me throwing spitball and stuff out. And so whether it's a sacrifice or whether it's slaughtering beasts that she's like struggling with and they're kind of a toxic thing in the environment... Um, she's still slaughtering the beasts and prepping the environment, which is like, there's a certain intention behind the environment wisdom is setting up. And that's taking care of your physical and environmental health from an entrepreneurial standpoint. Like, are you taking care of yourself physically so you can continue to show up? And then are you taking care of your environment so that your inputs are leading to great outputs? And then phase 10, cutting those negative influences, the relationships that are pulling you down, you know, those two minute people in your life where you really shouldn't talk to them for more than two minutes, two minutes. And then building up those positive influences where it's like, these are people I can do business with for 30 years. Are you curating your environment in that way? That's what I see wisdom doing here. That's the entrepreneurial application I get from chapter nine, verse two. But hey, maybe that's a little bit of a stretch because I think the beasts were more of a sacrifice. But even then, you could ask the question, what do you need to sacrifice in your environment right now to set it up well for the intention that you have? So it still kind of works. That also might be a bit of a stretch, but you guys get the point. Um, Set up your environment well and set it with intention. And sometimes that requires preparation, which in this case, wisdom was slaughtering the beasts. The intent behind it, I'm not sure, but she did slaughter them in preparation to set up the environment for her intention. Then she mixed the wine and then she set the table. All that is making sure your environment aligns with your intention. And so where has this shown up in my life? I would say deciding who to listen to. When I was thinking of this more as like beasts in your head, beasts in your environment that are pulling you down, that are fighting you. I'm like, there's a lot of negativity out there in the world and I decide what I listen to. It's just what I do. And then catching my own thinking when I'm thinking of inner beasts, but then of the people I actually do listen to, calling them out on their thinking. That accountability needs to be there. So like when my brother starts tripping, I'll call him out. And I hope he does the same for me. Where do I want this to show up in my life? I want a rock star community of impact entrepreneurs. And that's really just um, left with love realized. I want to build a community of people who care about helping people approach them with unconditional love and the commitment of a, that a parent has for a child, but for a stranger. I know that's intense. I know that's a bit insane, but it's the type of love that will change the world. And how can you guys apply this to your life? I would say do an audit of the purpose behind things in your life. So there was a purpose behind wisdom slaughtering the beasts. There was a purpose behind mixing the wine. There was a purpose behind setting the table. So when you audit the purpose of the things in your life, write down the people and the activities in your life. And also your thoughts and your feelings, maybe. Write all that stuff down. And then write the purpose that serves in your life and write down the actual fruit. So if it's like, okay, I wake up or I wake up late. I sleep in. And I sleep in because I like being comfortable. But then the fruit that sleeping in produces is you always being late for work, which produces anxiety throughout the day. Your purpose and your fruit aren't aligned. I think that's an issue for a lot of people. So start aligning that purpose and fruit with the activity. And so activity produces fruit. That fruit needs to be aligned with the purpose of that activity. If it's not, you need to switch something up. And so this can literally happen in Excel. Get three columns, 
write down people, person slash activity, write down, per write down people slash activity, my bad, then write down purpose, then write down fruit and say, I wake up early. And the purpose of that is to get a good start on my day. And the fruit of that is I have a good day. Boom. Perfect. Keep on going with every activity in your life and every person in your life. Say I have a, an acquaintance. The purpose of this acquaintance in my life is to produce cash flow and business together. The fruit of this is we are losing cash flow. Maybe you need a different friend or we're picking up debt that is bad debt. Maybe you need a different friend. So just go through those things in your life, audit it, and then you know make the changes that are necessary. That's all we got for you guys today on the show. Thank you so much for listening. We will see you on the next one. And on that note, we're out.